Good evening, everybody. It is uh, Tuesday. We are in July, July 2nd. It's amazing how fast this uh, year is already going. So mm -hmm. uh, today we're going to talk about uh, buyer brokers, all right, a buyer broker agreement and what's going on with this lawsuit. I know everybody is still uh, talking about it. I think a lot of people are getting numb to it, but there are some things we, you know, there are some changes that are imminent and there are some changes that are still up in the air. Okay. Um, everybody at this point is aware of what's going on as far as the lawsuit with NAR, correct? Okay. So, so bottom line, um, you know, it's at the end of the day, as I've said before, this is the greatest industry in the world because this is the only industry that we get to directly affect the economy of the United States. All right. So while this lawsuit has been going, okay. While this lawsuit has been going, there has been lots and lots of people in the background working on, on, on our behalf, on the buyer's behalf, seller's behalf, to make sure that we can continue to do business, all right? So they did announce that the, um, the, the commission, all right, is going to be removed from all MLSs as of August 17th, okay? So we're just over a month away. That is going away. Uh, Stellar already announced that it's uh, it's going away before then. All right. August six. Please August consult 6th. your please consult your local boards. There's a, usually a chat in your right hand corner or call to find out when each of your individual boards are going forward with this. It's very important so you can explain everything to everyone. That's your public service announcement for the day. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. Each, each board is, is going to be coming out different. Um, there's already changes being made. All right. Now, what does this mean to you? All right. This means you need to jump into this buyer brokerage agreement. And I believe they're still making some changes to it. So we don't have the final buyer broker agreement that you will be using when, uh, when this all transpires. However, the gist of it is going to be the same. All right. The buyer brokerage agreement, as we've discussed, is what allows or, or creates the agreement between you and your buyer for compensation. All right. Now, I know Shari was mentioning the, um, you know, with the um, um, in Stellar, apparently they're going to have a box. They've gotten approved to say, uh, yes, this seller is willing to give compensation or no, there will not be a monetary uh, value there. So it will be written in the contract all right once this gets the smoke settles that you know the how whoever is going to pay the commission right most of the time we're going to be asking for the the seller to pay it right but as i've said before 70 percent of the the buyers out there use realtors and there's a reason behind this you've heard my story all right when i bought my first house it went horribly wrong all right, I was unrepresented. I was a dumb kid, and it, it they need representation on the buying side. All right, there's some people that think they're savvy enough, but anybody that represents themselves always comes up short. All right, I've said it before. When I <clears throat> when I bought my house, I took you know my last house, I took it for granted because I knew what I was doing, and I still, I mean, I got a, a decent deal, but throughout the transaction, I I was you know getting emotional about it. Right, because I didn't have me to calm me down and guide me through it, and I knew it, and it was stupid. I knew what I was doing, but it's still an emotional thing. Okay, so we want to make sure that we have the buyer broker agreement in place. Now, like I said, the final one will be coming out shortly, but the the main fields are going to be relatively the same. It might be just formatted a little bit different. Does every, everybody understand that? All right. This is not something to be afraid of. This is something we should all be embracing. And actually, it's, it's actually kind of cool if you think about it, because for the longest time, right, we have looked at the MLS and crap, this one pays 2%. Crap, this one pays two and a quarter percent. And then you guys are like, oh, I want to get paid more. Well, now you're going to ask for it. You're going to do it up front, and you're going to sign the agreement at what, it, you know, what you're looking to get paid. All right. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. It, it's all, 
it's all in how we we word the the conversation if we do the like i've said before you're either going to have the conversation now or you're going to have it later right as far as with clients with everything right if you don't educate your clients now right and have that conversation and do that good buyer presentation at the beginning and explain to them what's happening they're going to call you every five minutes what's happening now why didn't i hear anything what's happening what's going on and it's going to become very painstaking if you take the time we all have a good solid buyer presentation in place use it have that consultation sit down with your clients make sure that they understand what is going on and this is why we do it so not only do you get to explain it but now we get to leave it with your clients so when they're up at 11 o'clock and i'm not answering my phone at 11 o'clock in case anybody hasn't figured that out yet i'm not answering my phone at 11 o'clock but they have something tangible that they can read that outlines everything that we went over and they remember me saying it when we talked so it can alleviate a lot of your questions does that make sense okay every one of you has this in your in your um in your uh we use app files if you're not on the team you may use something else but everybody already has one something similar to this in whatever system you're using okay so let's just talk about this real quick all right um does anybody have any thoughts or questions in reference to this yeah we talked about this at the agent broker exchange this morning i just want to reiterate and, and this will help if anybody's nervous about this. We, this is all we are, some of us, Chris is not, but this is all some of us are thinking about. The general public, you'd be surprised. I went to a listing appointment yesterday and I said, by the way, you know, we may not, this is what's gonna happen as of August 7th. They looked at me like I was crazy. They had no idea what I was talking about. If you explain this from a place of matter of fact, confidence both the buyer broker agreement and when you're at your listing appointments i promise you you will not get any pushback just like we always stress with the contracts be educated in what you're speaking about when chris goes over this we're going to study this practice this it's going to be a second language to you the buyers are all going to say okay and that's it so you know just remember that again this is our lives this is not theirs yeah and, and monica is is in maryland they've been using um buyer broker agreements for well over a decade where it's been mandatory so i mean it's not hard it's just a matter of adapting um the hardest thing that it's going to be for is the realtors that are in the community that are not used to using this that you know their brokers have said either you know transaction broker or some of the people don't even run with that okay but we have to have the, the, the buyer broker agreement in place. So that is the biggest thing. All right. We'll be getting the updated one out to everybody as soon as we have the final final copy. All right. And we will have more training on it at that point. But this is not something to, to be afraid of. Does that sound good? Okay. So that being said, it's a very simple agreement. Oh, let me just also lead with this real quick. Um, we um you you all know i'm heavy on the the um um on the new construction right i met with a builder last week and some of you guys know we signed a contract an exclusive contract with a local builder that should be good for you know um they're on track to do uh between 50 and 60 homes a year okay now at the average price point average homes that is you know um 500 and uh you know about $575,000 in buyer broker fees that they'll pay out per year. Okay. If they, if they hit those marks. So at that point, the, the first thing they asked me was, so, so I heard about this lawsuit, so we don't have to buy, pay a buyer broker anymore. Is that correct? And I said, very simply, I said, look, I said, you know, it's never been your responsibility to pay a buyer broker. However, why would you go fishing without bait? right? You put the hook in the water, you're not going to catch any fish without it if you don't put anything on the hook. Same thing here, all right? You will either pay it now or you'll pay it later in a, in a reduced sales price. So the best thing is, is to market this and allow us to pay a buyer broker to bring those buyers in. Does that make sense? All right? 
at fifty to sixty thousand, uh, fifty to sixty homes per year. All right, that's pr roughly seventeen to eighteen million dollars in, in home sales. That equates out to uh, over five hundred thousand dollars in uh, a, uh, buyer agent commissions every year. That's a million and a half dollars in buyer commissions in the three-year contract that we have. Okay, and as soon as I explained it, they didn't even think about it. They said, "Okay." because it makes sense, all right? So you're not gonna have an issue. The, the, Fannie and Freddie have already said it will not count towards, if a, if a seller contributes towards it, it does not, um, it does not uh, 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 count towards our caps. You know, the, the, the 3%, the 6%, whatever, whatever program you happen to be on. So it allows us to actually go after this stuff. All right, and where in the past you were com uh, compelled to use the the co the compensation that was being offered by the uh, the uh, cooperating broker, the listing broker, now you actually have more avenues to get paid. So when you write this up, you have the ability to still get paid from that that listing broker. You have the ability to get paid from the um, from the uh, seller themselves, and you have the ability to collect the uh, the payment from the, your buyer. Okay, and it can be broken up any which way. Now, the caveat to this, all right, the caveat to this is, is that once you put down the, the price, you cannot collect more than whatever you put on your buyer broker agreement. So here's my friend, you know, you Mike Smith. We, you know, we go way back. I say I'm going to do your, you know, your buyer broker. We're only going to charge you two percent, okay? And then I go to a listing and find out that they're willing to, you know, pay three percent. I can't collect more than the two percent. So Chris, I'm so sorry to to counteract that, but good news, they're coming out with modifications to the buyer broker agreement. I was just about to say that. Okay, but, good. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So yeah, they're they're coming out with those, and then we we should be able, should being the operative word be able to do that to make that adjustment, which is fantastic. Which means everything is the same way it always was. Yes, but without that <laughs> modification, you cannot collect more. Now, why yeah. is it so important to know? You know, a lot of us do uh, do deals with new construction. They pay, you know, depending on what it is, like right now, depending on the community, you have certain builders that are offering four and five percent buyer commissions. Okay. So all of that stuff is going to have to be disclosed and it's going to go above and beyond. Or the same thing with agent bonuses. All right. So that would exceed this buyer broker agreement. So that would have to be amended. Okay. Does that make sense, everybody? And I know this sounds cumbersome, all right? I know it does, but Heather jumped on here as well. Um, we've all, you know, Heather, Monica, myself, we've all operated in, in, in Maryland where the, the contracts are 60 plus pages long, all right? I, I actually like that, even though it's a pain when we're writing them, I like them because everything is written out clearly. A lot of the stuff here and across the country is amb ambiguous and that's why we're we're in trouble today is because there's so many so many things that are left to speculation sound good any questions on that okay buyer broker agreement very simple it's going to be like doing any other contract so you know there's really nothing to worry about here there's going to be the parties the buyer and then broker instead of having the, the buyer and the seller at the top it's the buyer and the broker, all right? And just so you know, the broker, the agreement is still going to be with, with the broker, okay? So whatever brokerage you, you work for, that's who's going to be going up here, all right? The term is going to be, you know, from what day to what day, all right? I highly recommend, unless you're using one of the, you know, the one-time showing agreements where it's only for one specific property, at least six months on this, folks. Right, you shouldn't be doing less than six months. If you want me to do a month by month or a week by week or whatever, that's fine. But that means that my attention is going to be focused 
on making sure that I keep updating this, or we can just do for six months and you allow me to work on finding you the home. And then if you don't like my services, we'll go ahead and write in here that you know you can cancel it within 24 hours. And you guys will be getting, everybody on the team will be getting the verbiage from me. Any, if you're not on the team, you have to check with your, your broker on, on the way it's, uh, you need to write it. Okay. But very simple, you know, it, you know, you cancel the, uh, uh, this agreement is, is, uh, avoidable by written notification by either party, uh, within 24 hours. Okay. Now it's, it's super important to make sure that you maintain your records. So, Lauren, I know you're out there showing properties to, to people, right? It is super, super, super important that you maintain, and this is for everybody, um, but you just, you're up at the top of my screen, um, maintain all of the showings that, you're, that you're, you're showing them. So when you show them a property, introduce them to the property, and you start to build that, you want to make sure you're establishing that, that uh, pathway so when something happens and they cancel this to try and circumvent you, which is something that's happened in the past, okay, you're still protected beyond the agreement. Make sense? Okay. Location of the property, there'll be more guidance coming out with this uh, here shortly. Uh, typically, you know, I'll write it as a property in, uh, in you know, in Indian River County or, or wherever you're looking. Um, I know on the one day showing, they want to have the address in there. Okay. You know, single family, commercial, whatever, whatever you happen to be looking at. I've, I've never actually been a fan of this one, you know, price range, you know, 300 to 400, you know, what if they go higher? What if they go lower? Okay. Make, make the windows big enough that you can uh, catch it. Make sense. All right. And like I said, this is going to be changing, so we're not going to get too crazy into this. But I want you to understand that this is not a difficult document. And by having the conversation with your client and setting this up, they don't know any better. They just they know that they have to have a pre-approval. They know that they have to have a proof of funds. All right. Does that, anybody going out there without proof of funds or a pre-approval on your clients? No, right? We need that, right? It'd be, it'd be like going to the uh, to the department store without without your uh, your wallet or your purse. Make sense? So brokers' obligations, right? There is still right. We have our obligations to to our clients, right? Our professional skills. We do have a confidentiality. When you sign this buyer brokerage, there is a confidentiality agreement in here. All right, so you can't go spewing your clients' information out there. But folks, if you were doing that before, you, you know it, it was going to uh, backfire on you anyway. So you don't put your your clients' information out there. Does that make sense? We have to work in our clients' best interest. We just had a situation, um, and um, the uh, where um, it was a, a listing. The compensation was in the MLS, and then the after contract, the the agent came back asking for more uh, commission. Right now, seller was okay with it, but typically that has to be negotiated at you know at the time of uh, contract signing or before contract sign. Okay, we have these responsibilities to our buyers. Does that make sense? Now, Sherry, have you heard anything about if they're going to do anything with our, our dual agency status here? Yeah, they're definitely not going to go towards that in the near future. It's too hard to change the state. It's They're thinking a lot of agents, though, in the discussion this morning, and people keep bringing this up, is we used to be, especially as listing agents, we used to be single agents. We used to be single agents, and then um, we transitioned to transaction as soon as it went into, you know, contract. That might be something, but not dual agency. Yeah. So, 
the the dual agency i i don't think they'll change it but i know with all the other changes it, anything's possible um basically what if there's if the other party basically if you're the listing agent um and there's um no buyer agent they would ultimately be unrepresented okay so at that point there's still some stuff coming out about that so we'll we'll have more clarification on that shortly all right now with this new rule on the on the buyer broker how are you going to handle it when it comes up for uh, open houses who do you represent when you're sitting there open, uh, uh, working an open house? And what they also, what we discuss is who, think about this, when the, a potential buyer comes in, who do they perceive that you're working for? Let's say you're sitting an open house for another agent even. They don't know that. Who do they think you're working for? Well, it doesn't matter. I mean, you're working the open house. So you're, you're at that point, you represent the seller. Right. That's who the perception is, correct? Yeah. So, you know, whether it's your open house or not. Now, once you leave and you start to work on behalf of the buyer, that's when you're, you're, you know, you have them sign this agreement. And at that point, you then at that point represent the, the buyer. Does that make sense to everybody? Who has some thoughts on this? Daniel, what, what are your thoughts on this? Um, like I I said it, I mean, last week um, I was uh, worried from, I was on the Cherry um, call and, and I said it to her and to people that were there, I see it as a positive. Um, again, a lot of people complain when, when I was getting into this business, um, a lot of agents were complaining about Oh, you know how hard it is. You go out and you work for free sometimes because people, you know, you show them so many houses and then they end up with the cousin or they end up with somebody else. And this is exactly the good thing about it. I mean, now you have to sign a contract and and you have. I mean, it's it's gonna be. I think for me, it's gonna be easier to to have this discussion that um, that before. Um, so. Um, I see it as a positive. That's 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 my mindset. I agree with you one hundred percent. Right, you have a contract. Right, you are now going to be required to ask them if they're working with another realtor. Right, mm -hmm. if if they're working with another realtor, or or you know, if they're working with you, now they're bound to you to to look for the houses. For those of you that have been here more, you know, for a little while, there's nothing you you know the feeling of working with a client trying to find them a home for three four five six months or more sometimes and then all of a sudden either you're sick or you're going out of town to enjoy a weekend with with whoever and at that point you get that frantic phone call hey i i found the perfect house i want to go write an offer and if you don't have the support you could potentially lose the deal but now with this contract you're protected Does that make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. All right. Jennifer, what, what are your thoughts? I've been using this uh, since I started. Um, so I'm pretty comfortable. Okay. That, um, I question one thing. If you say you, you say I charge X and then, um, you end up negotiating and it only comes down to it's less than less than what you charge and your buyer that you're working with just doesn't have the funds will the modification be able to go down you you can you can drop it okay now now t i or i should back up from that for a second it's the broker's discretion whether you can drop it okay, okay? with us if i choose to work for x amount of dollars and then i remove whatever we're fine okay you'll have to double check with your broker but okay. but most brokers especially the larger brokers are going to leave this in your hands okay okay i have seen a couple of instances with the some of i see this more in the in the smaller uh like boutique brokers where they will not allow this mm -hmm. okay 
So, um, but I don't, I don't think you'll have any problems with that. You know, okay. there's times when we want to do that, right? You know, I may have a, a first time home buyer. I know Lauren has one right now. Um, she's got, you know, very limited funds. You know, a year ago she was homeless, got into a rental. Now all of a sudden she's, you know, got her credit up. She's trying to buy, but she still only has so much money. Okay. Right. Yeah. And Lauren, I'm not saying to reduce your commission, but if it's a matter of writing on a contract on a, on a home, um, that is, you know, maybe, you know, half a point lower, right. But she gets her into the home that she wants and she can, you know, satisfy a client that may be something she wants to do, but that's something that Lauren, you'll have to decide. Yeah. And she's 65 to find her first home. Aww. Yeah. yeah, it's cute. <laughs> so, but I mean, there's, everybody has their reasons for different things. So yes, that'll be easy, but, but doing the modification to go up, it, it's going to be a lot easier to convince your, your client to do a modification and, and have you get paid less. But I'm not in the habit of, of reducing my money if I don't absolutely have to. What's up, Sherry? You made me think about something I never thought about in my whole life. Um, <laughs> what you said to save the ones that you've shown them, I'm wondering, unless you have a better system, you know how you have in the MLS, some people have carts, we have, mm -hmm. Beaches has something else. I wonder if I should, like when I come home, let's say I, you know, I, I show them five and as you know, maybe I couldn't get into one or two, you know, whatever the case is. Maybe when I come back, I should put them in the saved carts. And obviously we click on showing time, maybe 70% of the time. So that would be another record. Is that do you have a better way to prove that I was there or? Well, I, so I, I will caution you guys to not get stuck in the weeds on this. All right. But that was the, a good idea you had. <laughs> yeah. I, I would not, get, I would not get stuck in the weeds on this. I mean, obviously yes, save them. All right. One of the things that I do is I save them on my calendar. If I'm going out with buyers, I will, you know, mark, you know, showing one is one, two, three main street showing two is you know so on and so forth but i'm also when i'm printing these things i'm saving these printouts and i'm dumping them in a folder from mike you know mike smith right Me and too. i'm saving them in, until the end you can also just when you're doing the searches email them to yourself search for you know search number one for mike smith you know or search you know uh you know uh july 2nd mike smith right and i'm saying don't get stuck in the weeds because this is not going to be uh, the case often if you're doing the right job. If you're doing the right job and you're sending them everything that's that they're looking for, it's very rare that you're going to have this. But once in a while, you're going to have somebody that wants to to um, um, that wants to complain about it. And having that stuff, it might be a little more cumbersome. But then you go looking through it. I wouldn't spend a lot of time trying to organize and stuff because you only use it once in a while. Yes, Alisa. <laughs> about the organizing of the stuff it might be easier just make a google calendar for this person you're working with and you just put all the meetings everything so you have it in a google calendar and you actually it's in your calendar you can share it with the fire if you want so but then you can just print it and that's a proof with everything well, that you do yeah the other thing is too is when you're on uh showing time it keeps track of all your showings if you're scheduling them through there so that's another it'll, one. it'll also actually for the buyer's name. So you can put in either mm -hmm. first initial name and it'll keep track of it. Not just for you, but also for the listing agent. But here's where it, what it won't do. And this is something, and Jennifer, I see your hand. Uh, I'll let you go in a second, but I do want to highlight one thing. The um, One of the things that's about to change is we already discussed that on August 17th, every MLS is going to drop the commission from the MLS. This will go in reverse as well. So the the historical ones, it's going to be removed from those as well. Okay. So my my reason for saving these things is because you want to have the the snapshot in time of what you had. So if they change the the um, 
you know, the remarks, they change something happens to the house. You want to have, you know, you want to have that. So that's one of the reasons why it's good to save those, those, uh, those listings at that time. But again, I would just probably email them to myself and call it a day. Okay. That makes sense. Yep. Perfect. Thank you. And that's why also guys, if, is everybody here in Florida, Chris? No, we got uh, okay. Maryland in here as well. Okay. So just Florida, I don't know if Maryland came out with it, uh, came out with, or was it NAR? They can far came out with those two forms to sign possibly during the transition. They're going to come out with another one, but it was seller agrees to pay the broker directly, buyer's broker, or the listing broker agrees to pay the buyer's broker. That's another way to do that during the transition transitionary period. Yeah. So that's what I was saying is multiple different ways to do it. So yep. I like Thank it. you. Uh, Jennifer? So just one thing that I've been doing with my buyers when I've been going to showing appointments, I actually schedule a meeting on the calendar and invite them to it with the address so that we both have the record of where we went. Oh, yeah. Just use Google Calendar. Well, I like it on my calendar for me. Yeah. It, it makes it simpler because while I'm talking to my, my, my client, I can just very simply go on the calendar and hit the GPS and all of a sudden it's taking me off to the next location without yeah. thinking about it. So yeah. it, for me, that helps as well. Um, the other thing is, to, guys, there's, there's some crazy stuff going on out there, right? Just people, yeah, I'm not, not necessarily a safety hazard, but you don't know if it's a safety hazard. So having these things on your calendar is a good way for letting you know other people know where you're at. So on our team, you know, you know, all everybody's calendars is shared with um you know the staff here so in the event that something goes on we know where to start looking for you so and then in addition to it if anything happens outside of the 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 job and something happens we know what we have to pick up the slack for you on right because there's nothing like finding out that you know you you got sick and took the day off and you know you forgot an appointment with a client Make sense? So a lot of these things, they will work out. I'm I'm actually believe I, I believe truly in my heart that this will be a good thing for us as the, as this business grows. Eddie, I know you're transitioning back into this. This is gonna be a little bit of a transition because this is not the way you used to do it. You have any concerns here or thoughts? You muted. You muted. I kind of see it as you know, you used to get either a listing or a, a buyer, and you get the listing house. You know, you get it listed for six months, and you'd be in a contract for six months. I see it more like you're pursuing the a human instead of a listing and then you're tied with that you know potentially up to six months with that that instead of a tangible you know property yeah absolutely it's the same thing folks it's the same thing other than a listing agreement it's on the buying side so just our responsibilities are changing as far as either we're trying to sell this property or or hunt for for a property over here but it, 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 this is not something to be afraid of. Um, you know, I, the only thing that, that irritates me is we don't have the, the final buyer broker agreement out yet. But at the same time, this is, it's gonna be very similar at the end. There'll be some minor change, uh, fields to change at the end. What if you, um, you know, just like you're doing listings, you know, you've got a listing before and for some reason, they just are not happy with your performance or, or the color of your shirt or whatever, and they want to get out of it. I'm sure the, the buyers will be doing the same process. What is the process that we'll be up against as far as that? So um, when we have the special clauses, this is where we will have the verbiage for you. You will put in there that, uh, and, and it may change on the next one. There may be a... a a distinguished field um, for uh, terminating the clause, uh, terminating the agreement. But our our agreement here on the team is going to read something along the lines of, you know, 
uh, by, uh, by, upon written notification by either party, this uh, agreement will be severed within 24 hours uh, you know, of, of written notification. Will there be a fee associated with that, like a listing? So I don't typically charge a retainer on my buyer brokers unless I'm dealing yeah, with you, you, On a listing, is different because you have money invested in marketing it, whereas a buyer, you really don't have that. Well, so you some do people have the, use that with investors. You know, you do spend time with, with buyers, mm -hmm. and yeah, some people time. do. Well, and gas, and, and you could be doing something else if they're going to just walk away from you, which doesn't happen, thankfully, often. But um, some people who do who work with investors do charge that, uh, like a thousand dollar fee, mm -hmm. retainer fee. So let me see. It should be right here, um, and you'll see it on the currently. It's right here on uh, item six. Um, upon final execution of this agreement, buyer will pay broker a non-refundable retainer of, uh, and then you put in the amount that you're going to charge. All right now i do charge this when i'm working with renters because there's not a lot of meat on the bone and i'm not going to go drive around to 30 40 no. uh rentals to you know have them look for the you know trying to find the, the perfect home for them that's not right. how the world works typically if i am working with a renter you know, i'm going to charge them a retainer i'm going to let them know here's all the properties pick out your top three to you know three to five I might even tell them six. So and then you know we'll go see three. But chances are, if I if they give me six, I'm only going to get three back that I can go show, right? And then we're, they're going to pick from that. And if not, we'll start over again. All right. Okay. But you you can do it with a buyer. I don't think you're going to you know oh, I I'm not going to charge a retainer on here, and I'm going to let my work show uh, uh, show for itself. All right. And most of them won't pay it anyway. They'll go somewhere else. I mean, that's going to be on how, how you sell yourself. Right. Right. You know, if you, if I it, it, just picture this, right? I come to you, Eddie. I'm like, hey, Eddie, I understand you want to buy a house, right? Um, let's go ahead and sign this buyer broker. But before we do this, uh, you're going to have to pay me $1,000 because I was talking with Martha over there, and she says you're a deadbeat, so I don't want to waste my time. Yeah. Um... Right. That would I mean, get to know where fast. Yeah, absolutely. So it's all in how you sell it. Right. So, you know, I, I think with this, you know, buyers aren't accustomed to it. So, but I mean, you can train them to do it. But I, I do it with, with renters because of the fact that, you know, if you're doing a buyer, you know, you should have the, the pre approval. That pre approval, right. as long as they've done it through a reputable lender, right? I know they've at, at least put their best foot forward to provide the, the financing and done uh, they've done what they need to do right they're serious pretty much no. yeah i mean if, if they don't have a buy uh, if they don't have a pre-approval i'm not going out to show them properties and they're qualified and and serious yeah so i, I have now does that guarantee they're going to buy no but neither no. does a retainer no so that'll be something that you will have to you know decide personally i i don't think it, it'll be a good business practice but you know, because you got to build that rapport. I'm not familiar with it at all. So we will, you get into the agreement right prior to an offer or do you get into agreement, you know, when you start showing them houses or right away? Or? The buyer broker agreement is going to have to be signed at the time of first meeting. Okay. Okay. So you want this going forward. So um, I'm not saying you have to send it to them to sign electronically before I'll even leave my chair. But I guarantee I will have these there, and when I meet them for the first time, they will sign this. And what is the verbiage that we're supposed to use whenever you run into a buyer and they're already in agreement with another realtor? Well, they're already in agreement with another realtor, so you can't represent them. All right. So you just right. So th this is why it's going to be mandatory that we ask: Are you under you know Are you under contract with? And, and you should be asking it now, but. It will be mandatory, you know, come the seventeenth. Right. Are you working with another realtor? Are you under contract? All right. And and you know, it sounds cumbersome, but once you guys get used to this, it's going to be a whole lot easier, and it's going to save you time. 
you know, you don't want to be out showing a house and you're like, thanks for, you know, you hear, thanks for, you know, showing me the house. I'll, I'll have my agent write it up. What? You know, we don't get paid an hourly salary, right? Or an hourly wage. So this is what, it, this is going to protect us in the long run. It'd be a learning curve for some of us, but it's it's a matter of getting this in, in front of everybody. All right, once we have the, once we have the actual agreement and it's done, we will jump on and we're gonna have role playing with the buyer agreement that we'll be using. Make sense? Yes. So for right now, you have this, everyone has this in your documents. Please, if, if you haven't, at least print it out and read it, get used to it for now, because there will be changes, but it's still gonna be a similar gist. Sound good? Yep. Now, one thing that they, they are talking about, and I haven't seen it, but I have um, heard from some pretty competent sources, is there is no, I know that there's been some memes and some silly stuff on the internet that, you know, put people doing things, uh, you know, to show 3% or 2% or whatever the percentage that they're going to offer and ways to put it in pictures or in whatever creative ways to put it out there. That is for, forbidden. And they've already come out with the fact that if you do that, you will be banned, not, not suspended, but banned from privileges on the MLS. Okay, so the fact that like Stellar has it where seller compensation is 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 provided yes or no, that's a starting point. Right? That that'll be approved. But anything as far as numbers, we cannot do. What's up, Martha? Oh, with the KV Corp people that are looking to have not wanted to go. Uh, what would you say there, Martha? You know, we get the KV Corn people that they want to, they want you to look for homes and send them homes um, listing wise, but they haven't actually wanted to go see something. Do you go ahead and, and send this out to them or do you wait until they're ready to, to, to look at something? Well, I mean, that's a great question, right? But have you solidified the relationship at that point, right? So, so can I send somebody listings? All right, let me let me just change the, the the verbiage. Now, you guys know here on the team, okay? We have unlicensed people on the team, admin admin people, right? Are they allowed to send out listings to to um? To our buyers, if, if I ask Ken, or Ken's licensed, but if I ask uh, Zia to send out listings, can she send out the listings through the MLS? Well, through KB Core or whatever program we're using? They, it seems like they are being sent. Yeah, whether they, they can, because that in itself is not constituting an agency relationship. So... When somebody comes in and they're just kicking tires and whatever, and they want to see what's out there, I can have the conversation with them. I can I can actually send them some listings, okay, to, to start to get them going. But before I go and show that first property, right, yeah. we have the relationship. We're, we're, now we're, we're starting to get further in. I need to have this signed. Does that make sense? Now, you might have somebody that is, for example, I mean, I mean, I, I can't tell you. I'm, I've been to, I don't know, maybe two or three closings this year, right? Everything is remote. I, I don't even meet some of these people. But before I start doing the virtual tours and doing that stuff, then, yes, it's going to fall into that as well. You're going to have to have the buyer broker uh, uh, signed in in place. Okay, so in that instance, you would have to have it. But just to send them, hey, you want me to, you know, send me everything, three bedroom, two bath in Sebastian. Not a problem. I'll do it. Does that make sense? Answer your question then, Martha? Yes, thank you. Absolutely. Anybody else?
guys the more the more that this goes on out there the 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 better i feel about it um shari uh put out earlier today that about the new changes in the leasing program right that now the the full amount of the lease will count towards your production okay now for anybody that doesn't understand what that means right the when you get a, a lease you get 20 you know two thousand dollars or twenty five hundred dollars uh, and that's what the the commission is that's what it's being reported on but really if it's a two thousand dollar a month lease it's a twenty four thousand dollar lease for a 12 month lease leasing is still a form of ownership it's not as high as fee simple but it's still a form of ownership i have purchased the rights to this particular property for a period of 24 you know 12 24 36 months whatever it is you own you know obviously there's certain you know you have to get you know the landlords uh okay on certain things but it's still the the ownership a 12 month lease the actual sale amount is if it's a 12 month lease of $2000 is $24,000 it's a $24,000 sale okay i've said this before in this industry we are our own worst enemies because things we, we we accept things as well that guy over there did it and that guy over there did it so it must be okay that's not the case if we actually did the leases that the way that they were supposed to we would make a whole lot more money residential leases why would you take half a month a month rent you do a, tw a, a, a two-year lease you're getting paid like like uh, one and a half percent right so it's it's much lower right so you you have to know these things but these tools if you use them right will leverage you into into the future does that make sense all right so once we have this we'll get that out there but anybody have any i want to go over this stuff because I know this is looming over a lot of people, and this is not something to be scared of. Sound good? Yep. Anybody have any other thoughts, questions? Nothing? Anybody have any questions in reference to anything else that they're, they're dealing with right now? even outside of this buyer broker agreement okay you'll you'll see a lot of stuff there is a website uh let me see where i just I saved it for everybody and um i'm going to drop this in the chat for anybody that's interested I just dropped it in in the chat but if anybody is interested there it nard does have a frequently asked questions section in the website so if you would like to go in and review it take a look you know all, all a lot of the big questions are all answered right here all right who is covered right so if you're you're concerned about it but i wanted to hit the the gist and, and the main um uh topics sound good All right. Any any other questions or concerns? All right. Well, I know we're a little bit before the hour, so um, if you guys have anything, feel free to shout it out. If not, we can call it a little bit early today, and then uh, we'll pick back up again next week. See some of you tomorrow morning at ten thirty, please. <laughs> Bye, guys. Thank you, Chris. Sounds good. Thank you, Thanks, Chris. Chris. See you guys here in a little bit. Thank you. Thank Bye, you. Bye, everybody. Bye.